Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You'll never have the sacred stone. <laughs> oh, this you crazy mother. Today's show or in today's episode, um, what we have decided is to look at all the three, two, one recipes out there and, um, you know, mix up like one or two of them and get back to everyone. Everyone is looking for an easy recipe to mix up. And I think the three, two, one, you know, hashtag or series is something to go and look at. Um, I found two recipes and I'll talk about my experiences first. Um, but, um, the first one I want to talk about is, uh, ID10 teas or Dave's year in the mix. So in this one, uh, the recipe is 3% flavora mango, 2%, um, flavor art milk and 1% TFA honeysuckle. Okay. And he doesn't give him a, a write up really about it. He's created another recipe where he's used uh, flavora, mango, and TFA honeysuckle. So that combination was interesting for me. You know, I really wanted to try it. I didn't have honeysuckle, and I'm um, I'm exploring. I would I would say I'm exploring with florals now. Um, so that's why I wanted to get honeysuckle. And so I mixed it this up. I let it sit for three days. Um, uh, and um, yeah, man, it's it's a little bit weird. It, it threw me off a little bit to start with uh, because I was thinking because it's 3% flavora mango, it's going to be a, a mango vape, right? Um, but it isn't. It's a, it's a milky or creamy, um, it's a creamy vape and it's got honey, um, it's got honey notes to it and that's from the honeysuckle, that 1% honeysuckle. I think the the flavora mango and um, the FA milk. I think it was used here just to create a you know like a, a really thick, not thick, uh, a, like a creamy milk. You know, um, uh, the honeysuckle over here pops quite a bit. Of course, there's no uh, sweetener in here. The recipe itself is not that sweet, but there is some sweetness to it. It's weird, you know. Um, it's not unpleasant at all. I think it's, it's true to Dave. Uh, he's, he's got some weird stuff out there. Um, I do find it a little bit dry, you know? Uh, so if you're looking for like a juicy experience, this is probably not the one, but this is hella smooth. You know, it's, it's really something. Um, um, it's one of those recipes where you end up vaping everything, but it still keeps you guessing. You know, so um, I vaped, uh, made 20 mils. I, f I finished it all. Um, I think I might have maybe just a few drops. Let me just have one or two more hits from this. <clears throat> but I, s I let this sit for three days. You know, it's the WHO going to say, of course. <laughs> but... But Capel and Concrete River got you into florals. <laughs> it's worse than nicotine. <laughs> it's worse than combustible tobacco, even. The florals are the, are the work of the devil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I would honestly say um, that I think, I don't think honeysuckle is the gateway into florals because. Um, what is it? Is it Wonder Flavors uh, Honey Peach? Is it Wonder Flavors? Honey Peach. Jungle Flavors. Jungle Flavors. Um, that for me has got a more prominent honey and a, a higher honey, honey note than a Honeysuckle. And I think you could potentially use it here for the same function. Um, but yeah, um, all in all, this was this was a cool mix for me. I think you can um, definitely use this uh, recipe and add to it, um, you know, create something quite pleasant for you. I think if I if I kept the uh, the recipe as is, didn't put any sweetener or anything in it, and I was quite happy with it, 
Um, but yeah, it threw me a little bit because I thought I was, I was going to get a mango vape, but I, I actually don't. I get like a, a honey milk. You know what I mean? Then um, the second recipe that I mixed up was a Crusette 3. And this was pink pudding. Uh, I, I had uh, high expectations here because listen to the recipe. So 3% flavora vanilla mango, 2% juicy strawberry FA, and 1% flavora cream. So I really like, um, I like flavora vanilla pudding. I think, it, you know, it, it could be the key ingredient to creating like an ultra mal. So I was very interested to see how this would pair with a, a juicy strawberry and how the blend will work together. But unfortunately, I didn't, um, I didn't get um, that instant pudding, strawberry pudding from this. And, and maybe that's because that, that's the idea I had, right? Is if I think about an instant um, pink pudding or a strawberry pudding, I'm thinking about like a very artificial, creamy, um, sweet, um, uh, you know, pudding, instant pudding recipe. Um, but unfortunately, I didn't get that this with this recipe. It, it wasn't unpleasant. It's just not matching what my idea is of a, a pink pudding. Okay. The juicy strawberry has a earthy note in it. I think, um, I think if the strawberry was a little bit more artificial or candy-like, it might have worked a little bit better for me just because my expectation was artificial strawberry. Um, but I'm going to let this sit for another two days and, you know, see how it goes. Um, I've, I've done the three day steep as suggested and I will report back if it swings into unicorn land. That's pretty much what I mixed up. Is it a, is it a textural problem with that, with that strawberry pudding or a flavor problem or both? Uh, for me, it's it's flavor. I think I think the strawberry and the vanilla pudding. I think the vanilla and the strawberry. There's notes in that uh, strawberry. You know the earthy notes. That for me is a problem. Um, and I think they're clashing with the vanilla and the vanilla pudding. So TFA strawberry might work better. Yeah. There's some earthiness in TFA as well. I think maybe cap sweet strawberry. Um, I would have go as far as saying uh, in a whereas, in a whereas um, shisha strawberry as well. It blends that blends with pretty much everything, um, and it's it's got like an artificialness to it and not that earthy. A lot of people are tasting grass in it, but I'm lucky I don't. <laughs> Yeah, I um, <clears throat> specifically with the juicy strawberry. As soon as you said you you've got a bit of a, uh, it it's not what you expected. For me personally, the out of all the strawberries I've tried, that juicy strawberry is 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 my last preference because the earthy note that you say, I feel for me it's it's not as much an earthy note. Maybe it's earthy. I, I I'm not sure, but to me, I get a lot of a um, like a strong, other coffee or dark chocolate that completely numbs the, the, the strawberry part of it for me. And uh, if, if, if it was me mixing in, in this specific recipe, obviously not remixing it, but uh, I would have used, definitely would have used Seashark strawberry. That is one of my go-to strawberries, but again, I don't just choose one. But for a single flavor, I would have, I would have opted with uh, the, the, the Seashark strawberry, plainly because the juicy strawberry, definitely more of a coffee or a dark, dark chocolate to me. Okay. Dry strawberry is actually quite, you know, it's got that sort of artificial pudding note. Right to it. To it. So that, that might be worth, worth a shot. Yeah, I, I, um, I gave all my Clyde concentrates, you know, to my dad to use for fishing. <laughs> 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 I bought so many of them. Um, to test them out and you know I just I wasn't finding any luck with it and I kept it for about a, a year and then I just decided you know let it go damn it <laughs> Deeds what did you mix up okay so 
I mixed up the <clears throat> the one two three ocean by idiot I D T. Um, the description here is basically it's a blue beverage from Sonic Driving. It's just Sprite and coconut flavored syrup. The blue because the coconut syrup is uh, has blue food coloring in it. Now, when I first saw this recipe, it looked good because it says fizzy and it says sherbet. Now, if, 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 if you know me and you know what I mix, you know it's mostly, um, how do I say, can, uh, candies and fruits. So, uh, sorry, yes, my had some technical difficulties there. I mostly mix candies and fruits. I like to, to, to go to the sour side of things without actually using sour in my mix. So the fizzy sherbet got me really excited and the lemon and lime. I really love citrus and the citrus notes of, of a good uh, vape. So with this, I was quite excited. Um, before I go into the notes, I just have to let everyone know, this is the most difficult concentrate to get. It's coconut candy on its own. I did not end up getting my hands on any coconut candy because I'm not one to pay for courier for one thing, uh, concentrate. So I went with um, Coconut Candy DX, also from TFA, and it worked out quite well. I would say I tested it immediately after making it. Let me just, and well, it, it, it was still a bit strong immediately after making it in a sense of very sharp lemon and lime coming through. So I added on a stirrer and I tested it a day later. I went through various wattages, 30 watts, 35 watts, 40 watts. And um, at, at the lower wattage, you should definitely get a very, a very strong um, lime, almost like a, a blue lime, if I can put it that, like that. Um, on 35 watts to 40 watts, I got a much more of a fizz coming through, and uh, the coconut so softened up a little bit. And then on the wattage where I preferred it, which is about 40 watts, and I'm still vaping it at the moment at 40 watts. Yeah, 40 watts. Everything blends together very nicely. And what, what surprises me is this is three ingredients. And I love juices like this where it's so simple and it turns out to be such a, a, a complex juice, if I can put it that way. Like, for instance, the fact that it changes over the... Okay, we all know that you experience different things over different wattages, but how this thing becomes one under 40 watts, everything blends together very nicely. The, the lime is a very soft, sweet juice type of lime. Um, almost reminiscent to, used to get these old toffees that you unwrap from both sides. I think it had a, a white wrapper with the color of the fruit and then a small little picture of the fruit. Um, I used to eat a lot of this when I was a kid. Now, that lime reminds me a lot of that lime fruity or whatever the, the brand of, of, of sweets was. Very, very nice candy-like vibe going, but it, it's definitely more drink of a candy. And um, at 40 watts, it was very nice. The coconut kind of separated, instead of being coconut on its own, it, it became this, if, 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 the way I can explain it to you is this. If you go on holiday somewhere where, when you sit at your desk and you dream about that holiday place, if you go there and they give you a drink and it's blue, that's what you'll taste. It's, the, the, the coconut is not there enough for you to notice that it's a coconut drink. Yet, as the description says, it's a Sprite and a coconut syrup. It's as simple as that. But it's so much more than that. It's, it's really, really a great juice. And what, what gets me excited about this is this serves as a base to so many other great juices that, that, that I have. Um, at the 40 watts and after three days steep, uh, this morning was a three day steep, um, everything blends together very nicely, even at the lower wattage, just between 30 to 40. Like I said, my preference is 40 to 45, but it goes, it's, it's very, a very, a very nice all day vape for me. I, I, I can't get stuck on these dessert flavors because they, they tend to become very boring for me very quickly. Where this, the lime is very exciting. The lime is, is not overpowering. And I think that coconut blends it in just so perfectly to, to give it a bit of a mysterious kind of a, a feel to it. So on your first vape, it's, it's, it's really strange if, if I asked you, just gave it to you and asked you what is in here, you would probably go through four ingredients and then give me those four first. But it's, it's very simple. It's a simple three, three ingredient, uh, three concentrate juice. 
They're together very well. It's the first time I worked with a fizzy sherbet, and it's a really, really great concentrate. Together, these three, um, I actually bought a, sp uh, a Sprite to compare it, so I'm just going to compare the Sprite quickly. <laughs> This guy said Sprite, but it better be Sprite. <laughs> Look to me, I get more of a feeling of Mountain Dew or 7 Up. I always get confused between these two and I can't remember which is which. But with, without having tasted the Sprite and this before, I kept it specifically for now. But without tasting this, I would have pinned it to a Mountain Dew or a 7 Up. Mm. So let me, let me just check the Sprite. <clears throat> Definitely Sprite, they're not Mountain Dew. I think I was wrong. <laughs> it's a Sprite. It's a Sprite with a, I would say, a touch, touch, touch more lime than your normal Sprite, but it's definitely a Sprite. Mm. And the coconut just, it makes it a blue Sprite. If I was to give this a name, I would have probably made it something like Limited edition blue Mountain Dew or blue Seven Up because that's in my mind what it was. But the Sprite is, is a very accurate description of it. So it's a great juice. I love it. Um, for something so basic with three ingredients, it's it's definitely a good juice. It feels much more complex when you vape it. I mean, with a fizzy sherbet, it, it kind of gives you a little bit of a different mouth feel. Mm. Um, I wouldn't call it bubbles or fizz, but definitely a fizzy bubble. <laughs> it's very difficult to explain to you, really. This, um, it's, it's, a, it's a great juice for something so basic. I have already remixed it, but before I get to that, this morning when I took it off, I tested it again. And as I've said on my notes now, it is a very, very um, oceany, beat vibe type of, uh, I wouldn't have called it Sprite. Actually, never. It's 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 a holiday drink. It's like a blue cocktail without the, the alcohol in it. So great recipe, and um, tested it this morning. Uh, still love it. It's it's better. The steep softens up those those sharp kind of edges where some people might not like the the sharpness or they might say harshness of the lime, the citrusy the, that burst. So that that softens up a bit without actually taking away from the profile. It still leaves you with that lime vibrant flavor but i think the the, the fizzy sherbet has a lot to, to deal with that um so without having even finished the, the the test batch i already mixed up a new batch and in the new batch i added passion fruit and on my own amendment i added um super sweet and a touch of cactus i think so what and, uh, what passion fruit did you use <clears throat> i Tried for the first time vape grains passion fruit, seeing as the fizzy sherbet was uh, very highly spoken of, so I took the, the the passion fruit from them. I feel that the percentage I used it is a little bit weak, but I still have to get it off um, the stirrer to to have a decent sample of it. It's a very great juice. Uh, final notes on it would definitely be that it's a great juice. The guy is very accurate to his description now, only after I tasted the sprite. It, it's a sprite with coconut juicing but a little bit more i think he underplays the recipe and kudos to to i think the idiot it's a very good recipe and it opens up um, a lot of new very good vibrant fruity style pop or popping uh juices it's it's a really good base so i was very surprised with with what i found with this juice i'm always one to look for the intricacies in a in a recipe and if i see three ingredients I normally look at it and go like, mm, okay, it's a nice juice, but this is, it, it, it's, it vapes much more, the vape is much more complex than you'd think it is if you look at the ingredients in it. And um, as a DIYer, it gets me very excited because it opens up a lot of other great avenues and um, gives you a little bit, uh, something a little bit special to work with on, on fruity notes, which works very well for me in, in my coming recipes. So, yeah, very good recipe. Uh, I would definitely like to try that. Uh, create a recipe using one, two, three, the three, two, and the one percentage. It's, it's very creative, and I think it did very well. Um, yeah, it's a good, good recipe. I like it. Right. I had a look through all the three, two, one recipes at ATF, and of the entire uh, four pages, I could make exactly two. 
because I had first rule on everything else. So the first one I mixed up was one, two, three, Coco Pear Grahams by mixer Ambido. Uh, he describes it as a simple three flavor pear recipe consisting of a juicy pear, smooth buttery coconut cream topped with crumbled graham crackers. And the recipe is 3.5% TFA cheesecake graham crust, 3% FA pear, 2% Flavoria sweet coconut. Now, that immediately was interesting for me because for me, pear is an all or nothing flavor. Either it's your sole top note or it's an additive at such a low percentage that you don't actually taste any, any pear. It's not for me a great flavor for sharing a top note. And that is what this recipe seems to do. It seems to want to balance uh, the pear and coconut as sort of equal, equal top notes. Uh, mixed it up, gave it a week steep, and off the bat, I had textural problems with this. There's not a lot of body in the vape, actually surprisingly little, considering that there's three and a half percent of of cheesecake graham crust in there. The FA pair adds a very juicy uh, element to the vape, and the flavora of sweet coconut is also quite sort of uh, creamy and 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 juicy. So I, I got a vape that was quite wet and didn't have much body, which was a, a problem off the bat. But the bigger problem for me is that I'd never seen this pear and coconut uh, pairing before. And I'm starting to understand why <laughs> the two flavors just don't work very well together for me. I think it's, they both fairly bland flavors you know coconut is usually paired with something tropical like uh, pineapple or mango which gives it that kind of zing it's, it's just more a sort of creamy base for a, a a more tropical top note to sit on top of and pear is much the same it's something that i would normally add at like half a percent just to add some juiciness to some, some sweetness to a fruit that is that has more presence that sort of announces itself uh, more prominently now, when the two are put together here, particularly at the percentages there, at 3% FA pear and 2% flavora sweet coconut, the mix is very well balanced in that it's, it's not a pear juice with a coconut accent or coconut juice with a pear accent. It's, it's kind of a, a dual pear coconut pairing. And that for me is, is where I'm, I'm having a problem um, because the two flavors just don't, don't sit that well together for me. They're too samey. They've got much the same properties to them. And they're both a bit bland um, to be paired together and to have a really a prominent and strong top note in the flavor. So uh, it's an interesting mix. I, I hadn't mixed pear and coconut together before, certainly not as, as co-top notes. And it, it just doesn't quite hit it for me. I'm looking for something more tart and there's something that announces itself more, you know, something like a pineapple or a, a passion fruit or something that would be the hero in the mix where it's the pear and the coconut that are just backing it up. So an interesting mix. Um, it does follow, you know, even if it's not three to one percentages, it, it does follow the rules of a you know, three ingredient mix and in that it it looks to create something that is more than the sum of its parts. But for me, it you know, there are textural problems, there are, are top note problems. Um, so it's it's not really a juice that succeeds very well for me. I mean, if, if you absolutely must try a pear and coconut uh, partnership, then maybe give it a try. But for me, it, it was an experiment that doesn't really um, give me anything that I would, you know, that I would want to mix again or tweak or, or try and, and improve upon. So a bit of a miss on that one. Second one I, I mixed up was a much more popular profile. It's two tools, three to one creme brulee, which is the ever popular base of 3% uh, Inawira custard with 2% Inawira creme brulee, and then just rounded out with 1% Inawira shisha vanilla. 
he describes it as um, this creme brulee can be as simple or as complex as you want it. You can leave it as is and have a great creamy vanilla creme brulee, or you can add whatever top note you want to this creme brulee. Add a fruit of choice or some caramel or butterscotch and it will work. Uh, I, of course, didn't do that. I just did the, the plain base as is. And uh, it's a very well balanced uh, mix. Uh, you know, the creme brulee and the custard are in there. You're getting that rich egginess from the custard on, on the exhale. You're getting that sort of burnt sugar of the creme brulee. And then you've got that overall creamy shisha vanilla that's just sort of binding everything together and soothing and smoothing the the mix of the two custards. So it's it's very tasty, it's very flavorful, but uh, this is just my um, sort of personal damage. But for me, I don't know, a custard is an additive. It's it's an accent to something else. It's, it's not a vape on its own. And the whole time that I'm vaping this, I'm getting the feeling that it's a great base, but I want a citrus orange or... Uh, you know, kiwi or something on top of that. Again, just that that creme brulee base can can sit as a as a base and support that that fruitier top note. Goldfish uh, did his creme d'orange, where he uses a creme brulee base with orange on top, and that for me is a perfect pairing because you've got that tart, uh, prominent uh, citrus orange top note with that creamy uh, eggy custard sitting underneath it. So while this is a, a good base, I, I wouldn't necessarily say it's a good recipe. It's not something that I'm going to vape a lot of on its own, but I would use this as a banging base to experiment with different uh, fruit top notes and, and just to add something on top of that to give some interest to it. So a bit of a mixed bag on the on the three two ones uh, for me, but I can see myself using this creme brulee uh, base. I'd probably uh, mix up goldfish's creme d'orange, and uh, Rude Rudy has also got a couple of recipes that use the the creme brulee uh, base. Where I think I'd probably rather try those. A, a couple, and, a couple of recipes. Well, 57 at last count. <laughs> <last card. laughs> Rudy does like his custard and creme brulee mix, but uh, no, more power to him. It's, it, it is a good base, and um, I'll probably be experimenting with it further. You know, this is probably a bit bland for me. I just finished Wayne's Killer Custard as well, and again, I get the same thing. It's, it's a really good custard base, but I want to be vaping more than custard. You know, I don't know. I quite like simple vapes. If you give me just a plain sugar cookie vape, I mean, I've got your, uh, where, that's Christy VR sugar cookies and cream after a 14 month steep. So you must know is, this is, is, this is that is, the recommended steep 14 months. No, well, it's my <laughs> recommended steep. <laughs> uh, you know, this is starting to get a sort of gearbox oil look to it now after 14 months, but it's still <laughs> absolutely delicious. And I mean, it's a very simple profile. It's, it's just a creamy sugar cookie. And I, I like it for its simplicity. Now, this, the 3 to one creme brulee is, is the same vibe. It's just, it's just a bit, very simple uh, base, but it just doesn't, quite hang together as well as a simple bakery base does for me. I don't know if it's just that I'm missing the, uh, the texture in a, in, in a custard or, or, or creme brulee, but it's something where I'm looking for a bit more. Whereas with, with bakeries like the, like the sugar cookie, I'm not. Uh, simple is good for me in that regard. So there you go. That's, that's just my personal take though. If, you, if you're into sort of custard creme brulee vapes, just stand alone as is, then Two tall, three, two, one is is pretty solid. Yeah, I tend to agree with you there. You know, um, so if if you're used to, uh, you know, desserts where you're getting, um, you know, those layers and the, the top notes, going to just a really good custard is is like linear. It's very, it's 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 um, it's very low and almost uninteresting. If you if you're vaping bakeries you you kind of like experiencing three layers you know um 
some of the more complex stuff out there. But you know, if, if you then go directly from a, a complex uh, bakery and you start vaping a really good custard, it, it's it's going to be difficult. You know, it's going to be difficult. I think what what bothers me about custards as well, they always come out oily <laughs> for some reason, like deep fried. You, <laughs> yeah, it's it's like you, you're having a custard with it with an inch of olive oil on top of it. You know, I don't know; it, it just doesn't doesn't work that well. <laughs> well, for me, and uh, I think that's that's cap vanilla custard damage. You know, it does have that very rich oily oily notes in it, and I, you know, if you have a custard as a base. And you've got like a sharp fruit sitting on top of that. It's going, it's going to cut through that and it's going to, you know, downplay that, that oily note. But custard's on their own. And it's, it's not even just the cap. I get it with this creme brulee base as well. It's, it's just got that feeling that, you know, there's a little bit too much oil <laughs> in, this, in this custard. It's, every it's, time. Like an orange, it's like an orange layer at the, at the top of it, which doesn't work that well for me but almost like again, this almost like the same experience you'd get when you tried out a new fish and chips joint and you get home and you're eat, eating your fish and chips and you're like whoa there might be a little bit too much oil in here you know i remember when i was at boarding school they used to make uh mince for us and it came with that bright orange juice in the mince that, um, you know, is, is a result of the spices that they put in there. And one of the older boys said to one of the younger kids at the table, he said, do you want some orange juice? And the kid said, oh, yeah, great, I'll have some orange juice. So the, the older kid took the spoon and he sort of pushed the mince to one side and came out with this big ladle of this orange, nasty orange mint, mint juice. And he put that, put that in a glass and said to the kid, yeah, you go, there's, there's your orange juice. That's sort of the vibe I, I get from, from custard vapes. It, it elicits bad childhood memories for, for me. Yeah, I think um, um, maybe some um, BTS there, hey? Richard, oh, really. yeah. post-traumatic stress. I'll just look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? <laughs> that's that's gorgeous. It, is, it looks like a natural uh, NET tobacco. It does look yeah. like a very 14, strong tobacco. Richard, eighteen I, months old sugar cookies. I think uh, I think you might need to leave that for another two or three months. You know what I mean? Hey. <laughs> I'll pair it up. I'm not getting the right cookie. color vibe from it. No, <laughs> my I can see right through it. <laughs> I, I come through every morning and I look at my Cuprian and I think, am I going to be brave enough to actually vape this today? And it just, I never am. When did I make this? Hey, 20, year, 28th of July last year. So it's, it's had a year and a day steep. <laughs> There you go. One well, year uh, steep, steep Kufian. <laughs> Yikes. All right, guys. That pretty much, unless anybody else has anything else to add, um, that wraps up the Mixer Review 321 um, podcast. So, guys, remember, if there's anything you need to know about this, these recipes that we mixed up, please leave it in the comments below. Any questions as well. Thank you so much for watching and remember to subscribe for updated content. Cheers, guys.